Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our series on applied engineering topics. Today, we are going to discuss the stepper motor. Now, the stepper motor is unique in that you can control exactly how many degrees the motor will move. You can move from one degree to a million degrees, which would be a lot of revolutions. So you have precise control over how much it moves or spins. So how is that? So we have in the middle a stator. Um, something that spins, and we surround it by electromagnets. And depending on which magnet we turn on, we can control where the motor is going to spin. So here we have magnet one. Let's say we turn off magnet one, we turn on magnet two, then on magnet three, then on magnet four. We can go backwards and go three, two, one. So by turning on and off these magnets, we can control exactly where we want the motor to go and how many times you want it to go there, how fast we want it to go there. So I'm going to show you now a picture of the circuit. So here is our circuit diagram. We have an Arduino with four wires connected to, this is our stepper motor driver, and here's our stepper motor. We have four wires connecting the Arduino to the stepper motor. That correlates to the four digital pins that we're gonna wanna be using to control the four magnets that are surrounding the rotor. We have here a five volts and ground wire. In our case, it's five volts. This stepper motor could actually handle up to 12 volts. But in our case, we're using five volts and ground and our four digital control wires. We also have here this little ponytail that connects the stepper motor to the stepper motor driver. That's usually standard. There's no reason to alternate that. In this, if you could read here, if you know it's a little blurry, we have pins one, two, three, and four on the stepper motor driver. Those correlate to the four magnets. And we're using pins eight, nine, 10, and 11 on our Arduino. Okay, now you see on the screen, we have our code. It's a very simple code, very similar to a blink, a traffic light. We have pins eight, nine, 10, and 11. We turn on pin eight and, and then off pin eight on pin nine, off pin nine on pin 10, off pin 10 on pin 11, so on and so forth. We're turning the magnets on and off in sequence. Now, the way we control the speed of the motor is by how long we break in between each one of those sequences. So right now we have a pause of 10, um, 10 milliseconds. I'm gonna make three milliseconds and upload this code. You'll see right away the motor is gonna start spinning, compiling, uploading, there we go. And now right away you'll see the motor will spin quicker. Now, we are limited by the speed at which we can rotate. We are gonna spin slower than a DC standard motor. The reason is, and this is the two main points of troubleshooting um, a malfunctioning motor. One is when your motor seems to kind of be spinning, but sometimes spinning, sometimes not. What happens is if you spin your motor too fast, remember that the rotor is not connected to the stator. It's just creating, we're creating a spinning magnetic field. And that spinning magnetic field is going to catch the rotor. Now, if we spin the magnetic field too quick, the rotor is not able to keep up. And if the rotor can't keep up, we kind of get slippage. It feels kind of vibrating, loose. Sometimes it moves, sometimes it doesn't. The other way you're going to get a malfunctioning motor, or seemingly, is if you're turning them on and off in the wrong direction. So let's say I turn on, instead of magnets one, two, three, and four, I turn on magnets one, four, two, three, four, one. So you're going to get your, your rotor spinning in random odd directions. So we want to make sure we're spinning the, turning on and off the magnets in the correct order and at a speed that we know that the rotor can keep up with the spinning magnetic field. Usually you'll get a vibrating motor or a very weak motor, and that's how you know that you're, that you're out of the limits. So now that we've seen how to spin the motor and how to wire it, we want to show you a very simple way on how we could do something useful with this. But first, we're going to turn the code into a function. So let's go back to our coding screen. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to create a function. If you're not experienced with this, um, we'll show it right now. Instead of void loop, I'm going to call this void go. Um, and everything in here was just essentially spinning the stepper motor now is called void go. But remember, I have to have a void loop. So I'm going to create, recreate my void loop. Um, and my loop is empty. So I have my setup, my void loop, which is empty, and my void go. And the way I proceed to void go is simply write in my void loop, go. And whenever I get to this line of code, um, the Arduino would automatically jump to go and run my code. I'm going to add one more thing. An if statement, if digital read two is high, then we'll go. 
Now, I don't need an else statement in this case because I don't want to do anything if digital two is not high. So if two is high, we're going to go, which means spin the motor or else we're not. Now I have to add one more line of code because pin mode, because two is a digital read, I have to make it a input. Now, essentially what this code is doing is if pin two is high, the motor will spin because I'm going to run go. Whenever I go to go, I run down here to void go, run void go. When void go is finished, I come back up to my void loop and continue where I left off, which would be the end, and go back to the top of my void loop and check pin two again. Okay, so what you're seeing now on the screen is we have a green wire we added that's connected to digital pin two. That's the pin we're reading. And it jumps over to this side of the screen just so you can see. I'm using the blue and red jumpers for a power and ground. So right now, pin two is connected to ground, which means it's low. So my void loop is doing absolutely nothing. Now if I move this jumper over to five volts, now pin two is high and we're gonna start getting rotation on our... So going back to our code, you can see on our if statement, if digital read two is high, so if I plug it into five volts, I'm gonna adjust that now. Then we're going to run void go. Void go simply turns on and off our pins in sequence to create that revolving magnetic field. And if digital read two is low, we do nothing and our motor stops. I hope this was helpful. So we could also spin the motor forwards and backwards depending on what order we turn on and off the magnets to create that spinning magnetic field. We could have a bunch of different functions, one to spin forwards, one to spin backwards, one to spin slow, one to spin fast. Um, we could also keep in mind, or you should keep in mind that every time we run void go, we're actually taking four steps because we turn on magnet one, two, three, and four. Every time you turn off a magnet and on the next magnet, that's called a step. So it's a really powerful tool step motors are used in all 3D printers, CNC machines, regular printers, a lot of robotics cars, anything you want to precisely control the movement of, a step motor is your bet. Take care, good luck.